Hey, it's Tim of Librarian Meredith Myers, and this is the quietest I've been on all these interviews because I'm in the library. I'm here at Mirror Lake Public Library with the deputy mayor, Kanika Tomlin. Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So oh. great reading. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to whisper because, again, we're in the library. I'm usually the loudest person in the library. Um, but Kanik and I actually are old friends. We've known each other for a very long time. I won't say the number. Um, we go way back. We go way back. It's so good to see her. Uh, we both went to Bogusega High School. Go, go Pirates. Pirates. Go Pirates. <laughs> and we're also both fifth-generation natives of St. Petersburg. Yes. Are you so proud of our city? I am. It's a wonderful city. It's a fantastic place, and it just keeps getting better. You know, I think that those of us who are famous have been here for a long time, it's great to be able to now contribute to the legacy that makes the city great. And I actually left St. Pete, and I moved to New York City, and I've lived in Hawaii and Los Angeles, and I've gotten a chance to come back and see the changes. And it's just, it's incredible about just even the downtown area. It's just, it's, it blows my mind. And then, of course, when I opened the paper earlier this year and saw your picture over the front as our new deputy mayor, I was just like, if there's anyone that can take St. Pete even further and make it even better, it's you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad you talked about your path because I think that's just the way to do it. Go out into the world, find the best of every place that you can go, and bring it back home mm -hmm. and help this community thrive. So <coughs> your role as the deputy mayor, is there certain missions and things you want to accomplish with St. Pete? Absolutely. So I'm an extension of the mayor because 250,000 of us call this place home and millions more can visit every year. That's way more than any one person could do by hand over salt. And so I'm an extension of his reach. But our priorities are about people. We've done a lot of great infrastructure in the city over the last decade and now we want to put that same type of investment in our people. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Well, what can the community do to help you with that mission? Reach out and touch those with whom you have an influence and an impact. We're focusing on literacy and education. We're fo focusing on uh, opportunity creation. People talk a lot about job creation and economic development. We want to create opportunities so people can perpetuate their own jobs and be able to sustain their own promise and their own future. And um, we're also very focused on having fun, making this the best place in the world for people to come, work, and play. And that's what I've always tried to do with Stand Up Librarian is just, you know, I'm an unemployed librarian of four years and I got my master's degree from USF, but due to hiring freezes and whatnot, I decided to create my own opportunity and I'm still being an advocate for libraries and that's why we're here today. I wanted to showcase this incredible library. This library has been here since 1915? 1915, and it was a gift from Andrew Carnegie, one of uh, many things he did for the United States. And it was really a reflection of his philosophy that he's had a quote that libraries give nothing for nothing but everything to the aspiring. And so his thought was, let's create a place that regardless of where you're coming from, you can come and can really open the door to anywhere in the world. And that's how we grow and become better and step boldly into the purpose for which we first do breath. And we are big into that. And so we encourage everybody to read and spend time in libraries and get to know a librarian because they can be your best friend. Absolutely. I mean, the reason I'm a librarian today is because of my librarians growing up and Absolutely. going to here and also at the main library. Um, and so let's talk about growing up at the library. I was basically born there myself, always checking out as many books as I could. Growing up, what were some of your favorite books? Oh my gosh, I read constantly. I was a voracious reader. Because I had one sibling, but she was much younger than me. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of entertain myself. I read the newspaper every day from the time I was about three years old. And then some of the other uh, reading that I loved were books that all kids love, Beverly Cleary and Judy Bloom, you know, and I read every single book that they published, every one. I, I love reading. Oh, yeah. so glad to hear that. Oh and all gosh. the classics, of course. Of course. Yes. And plays. And plays. I remember one play in particular, A Raisin in the Sun, yeah, in high school. I remember you doing a scene from that. Yes. It brought a tear to my eye. Oh, I still gosh. remember that. I think an Oscar might be in your future still. Okay. Anything is possible. Into this. Into this, yeah, into your busy schedule. Oh my gosh. But yes, so I'm the spokesperson for this book fair, which is happening at the Coliseum, another historical place. And that's happening uh, the weekend of March 14th through 16th. And I hope you can stop by and we will be there. I'll encourage the mayor to be there. And I encourage everybody in our community's reach to be there because it's one of the most fantastic ways you can spend your time to get close to a book. 
I think she's pretty much wrapped it up for me. I mean, gosh, wow. Okay, so we're going to see all of you there at the 33rd Annual Antiquarian Book Fair it's happening at the Coliseum March 14th through 16th. I'd like to thank the Deputy Mayor, Timothy Conway, for meeting with me today at the library. I was actually nervous for once. All right, guys, see you later. Thank mm -hmm. you.